Okay guys, so this is going to be the um, how-to video for those of you um, that have bought a, pu a puppy from us with uh, level one or level two training. Even if you have level three training, this is going to be really important information for you. And if you have neither of these things, maybe you'll find some helpful stuff in this video to help you with your own personal puppy. And uh, I'll just be making this uh, video available on our YouTube channel. Right. So today we're going to use this puppy here, Luna, as um, our example puppy. And the one that, um, you know, we kind of use as our demo dog to, to show you what to do. Now, uh, to this uh, point, your puppy has been socialized. Uh, your puppy has been exposed to other dogs and other people. Um, you know, your puppy has seen a lot of things, different surfaces, you know, been been to places like apartment buildings and houses. Your puppy is, is, is has not just been kept in the kennel. Your puppy has been socialized and exposed as all dogs um, of this age should be. But moving forward, what is it that you need to know in order to ensure your puppy's continued success so you can build upon the foundation that we have already put on your puppy? So uh, let's talk about a couple of fundamental principles that you need to know with your puppy moving forward. So, the basic principle of everything, whether it's trading dogs or trading people, is you make it good to be good and you make it bad to be bad. And let's talk about what that really means, all right? In the most, I'm not gonna get into scientific terms or any of this kind of stuff. I'm gonna try to keep it as simple as possible. We want to reward the good behavior. For a dog, rewarding the good behavior is praise. Good girl, yeah, right? That's good, that's, that's a positive reinforcement for the dog, especially if you're the dog's handler or the puppy's handler. Um, we want to use food, especially for puppies. They have a high, generally, they have a high motivation to eat. So we can use this motivation to promote learning and positive emotion within the learning, okay? Um, and we want to use play. So using a toy or even just playing with the puppy can also be positive reinforcement that, that will be, the, the puppy will find rewarding and that will encourage good behavior. Now, needless to say, these are puppies. So the level of positive rewards that we offer puppies, right, and positive reinforcement for good behavior, and the level of maintenance we apply to the puppy's behavior is significantly more than with an adult dog. And it's not because adult dogs don't need that stuff. It's that puppies are at a stage in their learning. Just think to yourself, you know, if you, if you have a young child or a toddler, how much positive reinforcement you give them. You give them a lot more than maybe you give your 10 and 12 year old children, right? And it's because they really need that. They need that encouragement. It really helps to promote their learning. The mistake is thinking like, hey, this puppy that I've got here, this vir this you know virtual two, two or four year old, um, you know, if we're thinking about things in the human context, can be treated like, you know, a dog that would be the equivalent of an 18 or 20 year old human being, right? A two year old dog, even a one year old dog. The level of of obedience and concentration that dog is capable of is significantly higher than a puppy, right? So at this stage, we want to be really encouraging of the good behaviors. Um, so we've already talked about things that your dog will find rewarding. Let's talk about um, the other side of things. So there are going to be many instances when we're either training the puppy or when we're living with the puppy when we have to apply consequences for behaviors that are undesirable. All right now, um, there are a couple of key things that you need to understand when we're doing this. Number one, a consequence isn't what you decide it is. So a lot of people make the mistake of assuming that, hey, I think I corrected my puppy, therefore my puppy is correct. If you do something to your puppy, let's say you know you just uh, said no and you gave your puppy a spank on the butt, and you think to yourself, well, there I go, I corrected my puppy. Did I correct this puppy? Does this puppy look corrected? Of course not. The puppy actually thinks I want to play with it. And that's the mistake a lot of people make when they think they're correcting their dog. What they're actually doing is the puppy's confused. The puppy's like, do you want to play with me? What, what did you just do there? I have no perception that what you did was supposed to be something that was a negative consequence for an undesirable behavior I performed. So when you correct your puppy, you want to be firm, you want to be clear, and you want to be fair. These are the really important, and when you correct any dog, really, this is what it is. So let's talk about acceptable corrections for puppies. So there are a number of options. You can see the puppy is uh, wearing a prong collar and a leash. So what you can do is you can give the puppy a leash correction, all right? Let me demonstrate on this post what a leash correction looks like. So this is my leash, and that is my puppy. A leash correction would be, you know, marking the behavior, no, 
get a quick pop on the leash. All right? Not a pull, not a little tickle, a firm pop, obviously tailored to the size of the dog, right? Just a quick snap of the leash. All right? That is a correction that most dogs understand very well. Okay? And that, that's something that you can do with your puppy. Depending on the size of your puppy, I mean, this puppy's pretty small. You can give the puppy a firm no, and there is a um, area of loose skin here, right kind of next to the dog's scruff. You can say no, grab that, and give the dog a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a shake. Again, I did it very gently there, and you can see that the puppy actually didn't perceive anything negative from it. She actually thought I wanted to play with her. Um, when you do it for real, it's going to be a very loud no, and you're going to. Take the puppy and be very firm about it. So if you don't have a leash on your puppy, this is something that you can do. Um, again, it's really important here. The puppy kind of doesn't do what you think. So, if the, sorry, if the puppy doesn't do, show a su clear suppression in the bad behavior, what I do is I stay there until the puppy does. Okay, and this is really important. So let's say I scruff her and she kind of actually gets a little bit nippy with me. The big mistake a lot of people make there is they actually stop. They, they stop applying the, the consequence to the puppy, and they're like, whoa, puppy got a little lippy. I don't want to, and then I want to teach her to be aggressive. Well, yes, you just taught her to be aggressive because you did something to her that she didn't like, and she reacted in an aggressive manner, and you stopped. So what you're actually doing is you're teaching her to be aggressive. Now, if she did that, let's, let's be realistic. How big is this puppy? Not really very big. She can't do a lot of damage. So if I do something like that, and she kind of gets nippy. What am I going to do? I'm just going to wait. I'm going to pretend like nothing's happened. I'm like, okay, whatever. Have your little fit. She has a little fit. She's going to settle down. And then I'm going to stop. Right? And that's really the important thing. And at this point, look, your puppy is trained. This is, this is not something that you should really be dealing with. But I believe in covering all the bases, so to speak. So either a leash correction or you can give the puppy a little bit of a scruff. There's nothing wrong with either of those things. All right, so we've talked about the positive reinforcement. We've talked about consequences for bad behavior. Um, let's talk a little bit about how you're gonna communicate with your puppy, all right? So we have taught your puppy a certain noise is associated with food, okay? Um, and that noise is chip. Your, the puppy has learned when the puppy hears chip, there is food incoming, okay? Um, the other thing that your puppy has learned is when the puppy hears no or ah, ah, there is a consequence in coming. So this now allows you to communicate with your puppy even from a distance. So let's say my puppy is all the way across the room and gets into the shoes. Should I just walk over there and scruff my puppy or give my puppy a leash correction? My puppy's dragging the leash? Of course not. My puppy probably will stop by the time I get there, look at me, and then I'm gonna correct my puppy and my puppy's gonna be really confused as to why that happened. What I'm going to do is right from here, the second I see the puppy pick up that shoe, I'm going to mark that incorrect behavior. No! And then I'm going to walk across to where the puppy is, and I'm going to make my correction. Even, this is important, even if the puppy stopped. Obviously, I'm going to tailor the correction to, you know, the puppy. I'm not going to destroy the puppy with a big, huge correction, but I am going to make a little bit of a correction just to make my point. Don't do that, whatever that is, all right? Now, Let's say my puppy's performing desirable behavior, like a sit, a down, something I've asked my puppy to do, and I want to feed my puppy a piece of food. I want that to be meaningful. I want my puppy to understand why he or she's getting the roar. So the second the puppy offers me the desirable behavior, I'm going to take a picture of that behavior with the noise that I've taught the puppy means food, which is chip. So let's say I told the puppy to sit, the puppy sits, chip, and I'm going to feed the puppy. And you're going to see examples of this um, moving forward. So, Let's talk a little bit uh, before we get into anything else about the prong collar, okay? I'm gonna take the prong collar off this puppy. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the prong collar, why we use it, and what you're gonna do with it to move forward. So the prong collar is basically this metal collar that has prongs on it, okay? Um, it should not be overly loose, so you don't want it hanging off your dog. You don't slip it over your dog's head. That's a great way to put your dog's eye out. What you do is you take the collar apart like so, and there are numerous videos online about how to use a prong collar, uh, like how to, sorry, take the prong collar on and off the dog. Um, but you're gonna take it apart like so, and what you're going to do is you're going to put it together simply by putting one prong in one hole, the other prong, and you're just gonna push it in, and there you go. Now your prong collar 
is together. Now when you pull the prong collar, it's kind of hard to show it here because my wrist is not that thick. But when you pull the prong collar, you'll notice that these prongs, they don't go in, they pinch together, okay? And that pinching together is what delivers the sensation, right? All around the dog's neck that can be very mild, depending on how hard you or the dog is pulling on the collar, or sharp, depending again on how much pressure or force you're applying to the collar. Needless to say, this gives us the ability, just like a horse with a bridle and a bit, this gives us the ability to really be able to steer the dog and direct the dog um, and show the dog what it is that we want and also correct the dog if necessary for undesirable behavior. So it's a very flexible tool um, that's great for controlling a, a young uh, rambunctious dog um, and, and it gives you that variability. It's not all one way, okay? So it's not all one level. You can really be very gentle with it or you can be quite firm with it. It completely depends on uh, you know, the situation and the puppy that we're dealing with. Put this prong collar on the puppy. My puppy wears his prong collar basically from dawn till dusk. If I'm not home, my prong, uh, the puppy does not wear the prong collar. Overnight, the puppy does not wear the prong collar. This is simply something that my puppy wears throughout the day so that I have good, um, the ability to, you know, direct my puppy as necessary, um, you know, throughout the day with different things. So when I put this on the puppy, right up under the puppy's chin, okay, and I'm gonna put it on. Just as we talked about it, it's gonna be not too tight, not too loose. So too loose is, you see that yellow collar that she's wearing, her regular flat collar? That's too loose. Collar hanging down at the base of the dog's neck. But too tight would be you could barely get it on, all right? So you can add links to these collars and, and take links away. And your puppy, um, if your puppy's coming uh, via air or ground shipping, which is pretty much, or you're picking it up, your puppy will come with a prong collar. So, you will have one that you can use. So let's talk about the basics of the prong collar. Okay guys, so we're gonna talk about loose leash walking. And this is a really important thing, okay? Now the puppy's on the uh, pinch collar and you'll notice that when the handler is moving with the puppy, there are no commands for loose leash walking. Just go like around the room, Seema, just like as if you're on a walk. There are no specific commands for there are no specific commands for loose leash walking. So the handler just walks with the puppy. If the puppy pulls hard into the leash, the handler is just gonna give a pop in the opposite direction. So watch carefully, right there. So the puppy kinda wanted to stop to visit somebody. The handler didn't give a command. The handler just simply kept walking and just gave the puppy a little tap, just like you saw there. And you can see, it's just very quick little snaps of the leash when the puppy pulls too hard or you know, kind of tries to jump on somebody or, or something like this. And you might wonder why there are no commands. It's because there's no commands necessary here. When the dog is on the leash, generally speaking, we don't talk too much to the dog because the leash talks to the dog. She feels that leash as she walks with the handler, whether she's on a flat collar or a pinch collar, okay? And it's up to her to obey the leash. So if she pulls on the leash, then the leash is going to snap back in the opposite direction. It's up to her to keep a loose leash. Now, when the handler is walking, if she wants to stop somewhere or go to something, the handler is just going to keep walking, right? And it's her job to stay with the handler. A lot of people make the mistake, every time the dog stops, they stop. And it's like, that's not healthy for the dog. You want the dog to kind of learn to walk with you. All right, and you can see there, she's kind of like looking around, she's checking things out, but she's also staying with the handler. And that's really important. That's loose leash walking. Stop walking. Now you can see when she stopped walking, what did the puppy do? The puppy looked at her and went back to her, okay? There's no command for that. Again, that's just the puppy being mindful of where the handler is at all times because the handler has communicated to the puppy through the leash that it's really important to know where I am and to pay attention to me. All right. If the puppy hauls into the leash or um, you know just wants to kind of run off and do her own thing, then the handler will deliver a quick snap of the leash in the opposite direction. Stop walking. And there you go. Again, you can see she stopped walking. She didn't say anything. And the puppy immediately is like, whoa, what's going on? What are you doing? And that's what we want. We want our dogs to pay attention to us. Now, obviously, the level of loose leash walking that we demand from a puppy is not quite the same as with an adult dog. 
we understand that they're naturally inquisitive and social and interested in things. And we're not going to completely discourage that, but there are some basic standards of behavior where we're not letting the puppy haul us around on the leash. We're not letting the puppy stop at every little distraction that she sees. And we are asking the puppy, hey, when you feel this leash get tight, move into it. Do not keep that leash tight. So you can notice there's always visible slack in that leash. And with your puppy, when you walk her, make sure that there is always that slack in the leash. Don't allow a puppy to keep a tight leash with you. Okay, guys. So we are going to now show you healing. All right. So there are two components to healing. There is the heel entry. This is for puppies that have completed our level two, by the way. <laughs> if you've done our level one, you've done the loose leash walking, but not the healing. So break the puppy. All right. So now... When she wants the puppy to enter um, the, uh, the healing position, she is going to step back and give the puppy the heel command. Go ahead. Good. So, reward. So there you could go. You can see the puppy didn't do it correctly. So what she's going to do, she's going to break the puppy and have her do it again. And she's going to guide the puppy a little bit with the leash. Okay. And then she's going to reward the puppy. And this is important. So remember that mark? Chip and she feeds the puppy, all right? And the puppy's not allowed to leave until she says, break. Good, all right, have her do it again. So again, the entry to heal, really important. Chip, there you go, and the reward. And one more time, break. And it's important, I'm, al I'm allowing you guys to see, you know, like there's, your puppy will make mistakes, and it's important for you to correct the puppy for those mistakes. So step back, call her to heel again. Look out. There you go. Good Very good. And you can notice that every rep was a little bit better than the last. And this is a puppy. This is what I mean. This is a puppy. They're not going to be perfect every time. They are going to make mistakes. And it's up to you as the owner to keep your puppy sharp. All right? So now what we're going to do is we are going to do some healing. Um, in like in motion healing, and um, I'm gonna show you how that goes. So this time, to the heel, and let's fix that leash. Call her again to the heel. So again, not good enough, so we're gonna make her do it right. Correction if necessary, up, there we go, reward her. And now you're gonna do some healing. So now she's gonna keep the puppy next to her as she heals, and you're gonna see how she handles the leash. So the puppy's job now, you'll notice the puppy's a lot slower. The puppy's job now is to stay next to the handler and not leave her side, all right? Now this is probably one of the more complex commands to teach a dog. It's not something that comes naturally to them. You'll see a lot of people kind of baiting the dog with food where they constantly hold food in their hand. We don't do that. We make the food disappear. The food's in a pocket and the food comes out frequently but it doesn't always stay in the dog's face because that's not true healing. The dog's basically just following food and nobody in their right mind is ever gonna really walk like that with their dog. It's just not practical, it's not convenient. And what we wanna see here is that the puppy just holds that position. Notice the leash between the puppy and Seema's hand, okay? It's not tight. And if it becomes tight, Seema will give a directional snap to the lead. So if the puppy gets a little bit too far in front of Seema, she's gonna snap back if she gets just like that. And if the puppy gets to the left or to the right or behind, she's gonna snap that leash directionally to keep the puppy in the correct position. You'll also notice right there, puppy went to sniff the ground, quick snap of the lead and correct the puppy for leaving the position. And this is just one of those things that we keep working on. Good, stop, make that sit. At the stop, the puppy must sit. If the puppy does not sit, you're just gonna pull up gently on the lead until the puppy then sits, and then you're gonna remove the pressure. The really important thing when you're doing this is that you keep the leash, do some more healing, you keep the leash nice and loose, okay? You can see, anytime the puppy makes that leash tight, she immediately will pop that leash back to keep that leash loose. It's so important. A lot of people drag the dog around constantly on the leash and then they wonder why the dog becomes desensitized to the collar. It's because you're never asking the dog to maintain that loose leash. It's so important that when the dog breaks that position, immediately there's a pop and then the, the, the pressure goes away. When the dog's in the correct position, there should be no pressure on the leash. So don't hold your dog, do it the wrong way, Seema. Hold her tight 
and just walk with her like this. This is wrong. This is what a lot of people do. This is not healing. And it's actually quite stressful. When she's relaxed, right, you can see the difference. The leash is actually hanging and there's no pressure on the puppy. The pressure only comes when the dog breaks the position. And you can see she actually became stressed by that. And this is why a lot of dogs become leash reactive and, you know, they're, they're not happy in that place because people didn't make it happy. Whereas, as you can see with this puppy, when you're doing things the right way, she's quite relaxed doing the, the correct behavior. Come to a stop and make the sit. Good reward. Good, and that's, this is important. You know, you can see that the dog gets distracted a little bit sometimes by stuff on the floor because she thinks it's a treat. And when she goes to, you know, eat it, just a quick uh-uh and -uh the snap of the leash because that's the incorrect behavior. Okay, guys. So let's talk a little bit about the positions. So um, your puppy knows a sit and a down. So you're going to see it demonstrated here. So Seema, tell the puppy, well, break the puppy. <laughs> okay, now tell her sit. And if the puppy doesn't do it, this is important, which she didn't, right? She got distracted. Immediately, upward pressure on the leash. And then when she sits, you release that pressure. Break. Now, she's not allowed to get up until she hears break. If your puppy gets out of a sit, a down, or a place, or a heel without hearing the break, immediately there needs to be a correction and you replace the puppy in that position. Good job. Good. And now again... You're gonna give that puppy the command. And right away, upward pressure, cause she didn't do it. And break. break. And you can see when the puppy gets distracted, sometimes she doesn't follow the instructions. So instead of just standing there fruitlessly repeating, sit, 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 all we're gonna do is we're just going to pull on the leash until the puppy offers the desired behavior. And that's really important. Now let's do some downs. Break. break. Okay. Now put her in a down. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the down. So the handler asked for the down, the dog did the right thing, drop the leash. Now, puppy's in a down. Now you'll notice that she didn't say stay because stay is not necessary. Stay is implied. If the puppy gets up without hearing the break command, then the puppy will just, it'll just be an immediately, immediate mark from the handler, ah, uh, ah, uh, down. And she's going to take the puppy firmly by the leash, take her back to where she was lying, which is right here, and put her in a down. All right, Seema, you can go to the dog and break her. Break. Yeah. Now we'll do one with a reward, okay? There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Command, yeah. oh, and there she didn't go. So now we're gonna break her and we're gonna have her do it again. And again, you're gonna give her the command. Yeah. Good, good. So there you go, you heard the chip and the reward, okay? And not every repetition needs to have a reward, though I definitely recommend more rewards in the beginning because it really helps to kind of motivate the puppy and keep them in that right mindset. Good. And break. Yay, good job. And you can see sometimes on the break, the puppy goes to the handler and she's just rewarded for that. So the real important thing here, guys, is when you ask the puppy to do something, you're just super consistent about it. I ask you to lie down. You don't lie down. I'm going to make the pressure until you do. When you do, you're going to be broke. I'm going to break the puppy right away and then I'm going to have her do it again. Whenever the puppy doesn't do something I in, in the ideal manner, whether it's a sit, a down, a heel or something like this, I just have, I have the puppy do it again. And if she doesn't do it the right way, immediately we just repeat and repeat until the puppy offers it the way that she has been taught and that level of consistency is what creates a reliable dog never allowing the dog to get away with not doing it the right way break okay so let's talk about recalls um and and how you're going to maintain and progress the recalls that your puppies your puppy has so you can see here that the trainer is using a retractable lead um and this is really uh valuable um you know, because it allows the puppy to kind of get near and far without you having to use a big long leash on the dog. Um, and you can start kind of allowing the puppy to explore away from you, but also still maintain the ability to get the puppy back to you as necessary and keep the puppy sharp in the concept of, of coming when she's called. So when she gets far away the next time, the handler is going to call her with the command. And when the puppy comes, so you see Luna come, the puppy came, she praised her, and when the puppy got to her, she marked, chip, and fed the puppy, okay? So you'll notice 
She calls the puppy one time, Luna, come. Now, if Luna doesn't come, she's going to just give a couple of directional pops on that lead until the puppy turns around and is moving towards her. Luna, pop, Praise. And right away, big praise and the reward. Now, the praise on the way back is super important. You got to praise your puppy as she comes back. Otherwise, why is, she's gonna, why is she going to keep coming? You're rewarding her. You're reinforcing that behavior. It's like you made a good decision. You're moving towards me. I'm going to praise that decision, okay? So this is a great way to kind of reinforce the recall for your puppy and use that formal recall command, um, Luna come. Uh, if you don't have a leash on your puppy, you are not going to give that formal command. And the reason why is you're going to set your puppy up to be disobedient. Your puppy's going to learn that sometimes coming is an option because there's no way your puppy's always going to come, especially if you don't have a leash on your puppy. Remember, dogs to some degree, it's not a question. People make the mistake of assuming because a dog knows how to do something, the dog will always do it. Well, just like people, dogs have minds of their own and they quite often will make decisions contrary to what you might want because maybe that smell over there is a little bit more interesting than your hot dogs um, or you know that other dog that she wants to play with is way more valuable than your praise. So you always have to have an element of, hey, I can make the dog do it if I need to. Good. And that flexi lead, again, as you're bringing this puppy up, it gives you that ability to let her get away from you and have a little bit of fun, but you can also make those formal recalls. Now, if you're walking with her and you're getting to a point where, okay, you know, like I, I can't let her have all this space anymore, what you can do is call her. So call her, Seema. Good. And reward her. Okay, and now we're going to lock the leash close to the puppy okay so like we give her a few feet and lock it and now we have a regular lead and we're going to walk her as we already demonstrated earlier on so now just take her for a little walk good and now she's walking normally right now if the handler even wants she can even do some healing right so maybe have her heal good and reward good. and now and now heal there we go. And now she can work on some healing and do some healing, right? And still use the leash the way that was demonstrated earlier. Good. Stop. Make a sit. Good. And now make a sit. Sit. And you can still do all your positions, your sit, your down, all that stuff with this lead. Um, everything works the same. You've just locked it now. Now you can break her and let her free again. Break. Good. Uh, that break command. There she goes. Now she's free. She can do whatever she wants. You know, she can run around and smell the ground and do all that stuff. So this is how you're going to do the recalls. Again, if your dog is off the leash, all you're going to do... Here, Seema, take her off the leash. Now we have the no ability to make formal commands. So now what we're going to do is we're just... If she wants that puppy to come to her, <laughs> just walk. Just walk until she kind of gets really distracted. She's just going to clap her hands and say, puppy, 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 and the puppy will come. Oh, so, hey... You can see there, so there's a, ah. This is an example of what you would do if the puppy picked up something that she didn't want her to pick up. You can see there, she said, ah. The puppy immediately stopped, dropped it because she understands. And if she goes back to it, good. So just, uh, just do the puppy puppy one. Puppy puppy, yeah. Good, and reward. And always the reward, <laughs> always the reward if, if she comes to you. Yes, good girl. And this puppy is doing what puppies do, you know. Yeah, good job, right? And you'll notice that the handler is super fun, right? And the puppy wants to be with her. That's really important. A lot of people neglect this. They're just giving barking commands at the puppy. And it's like, it's a little puppy. It's the equivalent of a, you know, three, four-year-old human being. Do you talk to your three, four-year-olds like that? Barking commands? No, of course not. You're, you're gentle. You're encouraging. You're super fun. And they want to hang out with you. And if you're not, then they sure as hell don't. And your puppy is no different. So be fun. Good. And as you can see here, this puppy loves to have fun. And with gentle encouragement, she'll do the right thing. You know, yes, there's a time to be firm, like when she grabbed that piece of paper and decided that she wanted to eat it. Um, and there's a time to be gentle. Like, you know, she grabbed the, the, the retractable lead and wanted to have a little bit of fun. The handler didn't freak out and didn't lose her mind. The handler, you know, just actually was like, oh, okay, let's have a little bit of fun. 
you know there's always a limit to everything but doesn't mean you know it's a, it's a puppy you have to let them be open you have to let them experience life a little bit okay guys so let's talk a little bit about the place command all right now the most important thing with the place command is when you have a bed you make you make sure it's something that's distinguishable from the ground so like using like the doormat over there that wouldn't be acceptable as a place it has to be something that the dog can differentiate from the ground so the handler is now going to take the dog to the place she's going to point to it and she's going to ask the dog to get on it so Seema why don't you go ahead and do that good now break her from it now if she says break the puppy can come off if the puppy comes off there, drop the leash, just leave her there. Now, if the puppy comes off without permission, what the handler is going to do is she's going to say, uh uh, play. She's going to grab the leash and she's going to pull up on the leash and escort the puppy back there with the pressure. The pressure is what's going to keep the puppy on the place and keep her from coming off of it without permission. So, when you want the puppy to go on something, you point, you say place. If the puppy doesn't go, you would make directional pressure. So, break. This time, just do it with directional pressure on the bed, just so they can see. Just so, so just say place and directional pressure. No, break. break. With directional pressure, yeah. There you go. You can see the pressure of the leash, and then the pressure, of course, is immediately released the second the puppy offers the desired behavior of getting on the bed. And this is really important. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the crate. Um, I like using crates like this, solid plastic crates. Um, the reason why is it makes the dogs more comfortable because it's a little bit more contained than a, an open wire crate. It's also a lot tougher, so it's a lot more difficult for a dog to chew out. Not that this puppy is prone to do that, but um, I think it's just a good, good practice to always use a crate that's a little bit more difficult for the dog to get out of, um, simply because it'll just teach the dog to never try. Um, so. Here we have a uh, crate the size of the puppy, um, and you can use these for travel, by the way. So if you're wondering, you know, how to drive with your puppy because your puppy kind of bounces all around the car, I don't like using harnesses or any of that kind of stuff. I just use a small crate like this, um, whether it's for a puppy or even for an older dog. In the crate, they don't actually need um, that much space in the in the car or if you're traveling. Now at home, obviously, for the crate that the dog sleeps in, you'll want an appropriate size crate. Um, German Shepherd, generally it's an XL crate when the dog is full size. But this is perfectly sized for the puppy as she is now. So, um, Seema, why don't you send her into the crate and then you're gonna show a little bit. So we always wanna make it a positive thing. The dog knows the command, she goes in. She's gonna be rewarded always when she goes in the crate. There's always a, a pleasant thing. Close the door. Now we will close the door. You can feed her again in the crate. There we go. Closing the door is not a bad thing either. It means you just get a little bit more food. Um, in the beginning, if you want your puppy to really, uh, you know, kind of be comfortable in your crate, um, what you're going to do, you can let her out now. So when she opens the door, the puppy actually isn't allowed to come out. So you can see there, the puppy kind of tried to came out. She was like, ah, ah. She bumped the puppy in the nose with the door. Puppy waited. There's that reward. And permission to come out. Yay. Good job. Okay, and now you're gonna send her back in with, she's, after we untangle her. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> yes. Good. And you can see there the puppy understands what she needs to do. Now this would be a good size, this puppy's growing quite fast. This crate would be a really good size for the puppy to travel in. Um, you probably want the next size up for the puppy to sleep in overnight. All right, permission to come out. Good job. And this is a good little game that you can play at home just to keep the puppy always in a positive state of mind with the crate. Another little fun thing you can do, you know, you throw a raw beef rib bone in there with the puppy, a stuffed frozen Kong, all sorts of fun things that keep the puppy happy in there. You can take the leash off, Seema, and leave her in there. Good. All right. So let's talk about what to do if the puppy chooses to bark in the crate. Why don't you close the crate? Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about what you would do if the puppy chose to bark in the crate. So why do puppies bark in the crate? Well, they bark in the crate because they want your attention. So if you give them positive attention for barking in the crate, of course it's gonna be something that they're more likely to do, positive reinforcement for a behavior. Puppies and dogs don't have moral 
um, distinctions between good and bad. They just offer behaviors and those behaviors yield specific results. So it's really important to show the dog that barking or whining in the crate never yields a positive result. So if she was to bark or whine in the crate, um, the you as the handler are going to mark with a loud no and you're going to come over to the crate and you're going to do what Seema's going to show you how to do right now. So just go in as if she barked. Don't, don't say no, but just uh, give the correction to the crate. Okay, and that's what you're going to do. And most puppies find that quite unpleasant. Um, and, you know, they, they're like, okay, well, I'm not going to make noise in the crate. Now, that being said, as you can see, the dog is quite quiet in the crate. She's used to being uh, able to see things going on in the crate and also being by herself in the crate. This is something that we teach all the puppies that go through our program. You don't need to always see your handler. The crate can be by itself in a room and you're not supposed to be making noise. Or the crate could be in a very busy area like our training um, uh, room here and people and dogs coming and going and you're still not allowed to make noise and we're very consistent with that and we are you know if the puppy is quite egregious so let's say she barked or whined a few times in the crate um, and we said no and we went to the crate and we banged on it and she did it again what we're going to do the next time maybe is we're going to escalate the consequence right no open the crate door grab the puppy by the scruff give her a very firm scruffing um, you know and then put her back in there and teach her it's like you know, there is never a positive result for you making this noise. So don't make this noise. Now, in this video, you know, the puppy's wearing the prong collar uh, just because we've been doing some training with her. Uh, normally, if you put the puppy in the crate overnight or, um, you know, just because you're going to leave for a few hours or whatever, you will always take the, the prong collar off the puppy. So that's crate training. Um, and again, you can always make it a positive experience by putting something nice in there for the puppy, even though, you know, she definitely has learned that, uh, you know, and, and all the puppies that come from us learn that there, there really isn't anything in there. You still have to be quiet. You can't make noise in there. Um, so th this covers the uh, crate training. So again, crates are good for when you're not home, uh, when you don't have time to supervise the puppy in any capacity. Uh, they also prevent separation anxiety, which is really important. Um, and uh, they are super good for traveling with the dog because especially a nice crate like this, it keeps her contained. She can't really get up and move around too much um, and it's gonna help her settle down and, and feel safe in uh, a moving vehicle. Let's first talk about management in the home because I think that's that's a really, really important thing. So your puppy has been taught a place command as you see here um, and that's, that's really important. Um, and the place command is an excellent way to situate your dog without restraining your dog. And that's big. A lot of people rely on restraint, whether they're using baby gates, play pans, crates. The problem with restraint is while it might solve a problem in the temporary sense, what it doesn't do is it never teaches the dog the concept of impulse control. And the dog is constantly in a place where they just simply cannot make a mistake. What the place does is it starts teaching the dog the valuable concept that, you know, there's really nothing other than the power of your mind keeping you on this bed. And what that does is it, it, it teaches the dog the concept of impulse control. There's nothing really stopping her from getting off the bed other than, of course, the consequence that we would apply if she chose to do it. Um, but that being said, she's, she's controlling herself. She's, she's doing something that a lot of dogs don't have the ability to do. And that is something that you need to be able to maintain with the dog moving forward. Now, does that mean your dog's going to live on place for the rest of her life? No, it doesn't. But it does mean that you now have a tool to be able to coexist with your dog in your home, whether it's eating, whether you've got kids running around, whether you've got a cat, and you don't have to restrain your dog in order to prevent you know, the typical kind of problems that occur from occurring. So my recommendation is when you're in the home with your dog, um, your dog is doing one of three things. Your dog is either with you physically. So the dog can be with you and not on place. The dog can, can kind of be hanging out with you, whether they're in close proximity to you um, on a leash or off a leash. Um, you've got your eyes on the dog. That's what I basically mean. Or your dog is on the place, as you see with this dog here, or your dog is in the crate. That is my recommendation um, for this stage of development with a dog. And, and the reason why is because dogs are creatures of habit. And we do not want her to be picking up habits that are um, non-productive, habits that can cause problems later on, whether it's chasing the cat, uh, you know, chewing your shoes, and so on and so forth. So if you 
uh, if your dog is only in one of those three categories that I mentioned, none of these things can happen. If the dog is under your supervision, you can prevent the dog from doing any one of those things, as you should. Um, if the dog is... Uh, you know, on the place. Obviously, that really restricts where the dog can and cannot be um, without physically containing the dog. And if your dog is in the crate, then of course, you know, there's literally no way your dog can really get into any trouble. Now, let's talk about when it's appropriate to do either one of these things. Um, the place command is something, even if you find that you're one of those people, you're home all the time, you love your puppy, you want your puppy to be close to you all the time, restrain yourself from doing that. Really go out of your way to make sure that your dog is spending a couple of hours every day on the place. That is really going to give your puppy that constant uh, familiarization with 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 being on the place and 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 being able to control herself there. That way, when you have guests come over, if you have a life changing uh, circumstance like you you all of a sudden you have a small child come into your life. Um, and your dog has not been practicing place, and now all of a sudden you want your dog to do place, it'll be a lot more difficult. Whereas if your dog always has had this ability to go on, on the bed and, and kind of keep themselves there, now you can bring variables into your life, and it's not going to be a big problem for you. So this is really important. Maintain this with your puppy. Even if you don't think you need it, you probably do need it. So make sure your dog practices, practices this on a daily basis. The other thing is potty training. So your dog is either in the crate, on the place or with you. If your dog is in those three areas, the chances of your dog going to the bathroom in the house are minimal. Not completely um, impossible, but they're less possible. Especially with a puppy, okay? This is, this is where people really struggle is, is with, with puppies, with the potty training. And that's because they set the dog up to fail by leaving the dog loose and unsupervised in the home. And then the dog develops the habit of going to the bathroom in the house. So it is really important that um, when you've got your puppy with you, you set things up structurally in your home and in your life so that your dog can be successful moving forward. Okay, so that's, that's, that's really important. So your dog is either, once again, in the crate, and that's generally if you're not home, so if you're leaving for the work for the day overnight, um, uh, you know, or if you just literally have zero time to, 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 to supervise the puppy in any capacity, your puppy's in the crate. Or your puppy's on the place if you're home with the puppy um, and you have the time to supervise the puppy, but you do kind of want the puppy situated instead of just loose getting into trouble. Or your dog is physically with you. So, and I do recommend not just putting your dog on place for their entire life. That's not good either because that's not teaching your dog how to be without having something to do. So the place command, it's really good in some context because it does teach the dog, hey man, you've got to be there. You've got to be on this bed and you can't do anything um, you know, outside of being on the bed. But the problem is you do kind of want your puppy to learn to be in the house without actually being told to do something like the place command and not misbehave. So I'm, I do believe, especially at this age, with short portions of letting the dog be off off the place as long as they're with you if the dog kind of like wants to go be by themselves in the house i won't allow that i will put the puppy back on the place um but it's really important that the dog um does spend some time off the place and just doing the things that puppy should do now if she experiments with something let's say she's loose and she goes and and she picks up one of your um you know slippers or something that's now it's time for you to come in and be like hey I, 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 no and you correct the puppy you maybe grab the puppy by the scruff give the puppy a little shake let her know that the behavior is not acceptable now the big and most important thing to do is not take the puppy away from the thing that they did that was bad and not put the slippers away either Leave the slippers there and leave the puppy there and then stand back and see what the puppy chooses to do. Does the puppy go back to the slippers? Well, if the puppy's puppy does, then I'm going to say no and issue an even firmer correction. And we'll get into acceptable corrections um, you know, shortly in this video. Um, but, if, but if the puppy doesn't, then that's good. The idea is not to hide things and, 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 and to kind of avoid problems. It's to show the puppy, hey, there are slippers on the floor. There is cat litter over here. There, there's all sorts of things in my house that you aren't allowed to touch. And it's not going to go anywhere. It's going to stay here. I'm not going to, you know, tur turn my house into Fort Knox. It's impossible and it's inconvenient. These things are here. You're not allowed to touch them. That's why, of course, needless to say, we don't leave the puppy unsupervised. Because that way, none of these things can happen without us being able to react immediately and appropriately to these situations. So management with puppies is really important. Let's also talk about bathroom breaks because that's really important. Bathroom breaks with the puppy, 
this age, 16 weeks, it's essential. You've got to be, every time your, your dog eats or drinks, um, you know, you need to get your dog out to go to the bathroom. If your dog, you know, hasn't been to the bathroom in a couple hours, get them out to go to the bathroom. Yes, a puppy this age can spend the entire night in the crate without messing themselves. But during the day when they're more active and when they're eating and so on and so forth, their um, digestive system is a little more active. And it's really important that you get the puppy out on a regular basis to go to the bathroom. So, at my recommendation is frequently take the puppy out. Uh, you make sure you have a pocket full of treats. And, um, you know, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you uh, what to do outside. Okay, so let's talk about potty training. Um, like I said earlier, uh, I like putting it on a command. So, Seema, why don't you give her the command? Go potty. All right. So, the puppy has heard the command. Now, at this point, if she... Now, she was out just very recently, so she might not go, unfortunately, for the purposes of this video. However, I just wanted to kind of demonstrate what you would do. You're just going to stand out here. You let her... Oh, very good. Big praise. And the mark. Chip. There you go. And the reward after she goes to the bathroom. So, she heard the command. She sniffed around a little bit. She went to the bathroom. The second she's done, mark and reward okay so you just always want to reinforce this behavior it's like hey go to the bathroom so if you have a spot in your yard that you really want the dog to go to the bathroom always take her there on the leash in the beginning instead of just turning her loose in the yard give her the command and over a few weeks you'll get the dog used to going in that one specific spot guys let's talk about socialization all right so there's a couple things that you just saw here um you, you can see the puppy's got her little hackles up right now a lot of people think socialization is running your dog into as many other dogs and people as possible and that is not at all what socialization is socialization especially for dogs is primarily exposure it is not natural for your dog to love every single strange dog he or she meets it's not natural in nature so if you think about it you know Wolf packs, for instance, okay, don't welcome outsiders generally. If there's wolves from another pack, they're treated with suspicion. They're often attacked. Um, they don't welcome, you know, members of other social groups, whether or not they're the same species. You can apply that to any kind of uh, animal, whether it's horses, you know, uh, dogs, you know, it's not normal. It is normal for these animals to form close social groups. It's not normal for them to welcome strangers from another group into their group. And usually, I mean, it does happen, but it's, it's, it's a slow process and it's not just instantaneous, hey, how are you, stranger? Now, of course, there's a lot of dogs where, um, you know, they are very interested in social interaction. And as you can see here, the puppy's a little bit, she's excited, but she's also a little bit insecure about it, which is normal at this age, right? We don't want there actually to be too much interaction with strange dogs. I don't mind her being close in close proximity to them, just kind of like she is now. Not pulling on the leash, not barking, um, none of that kind of stuff. Just a little bit of like, oh, there's a dog. What is that? Right? That's fine. But I don't want there to be even, even this play. I mean, it's cute and all, right? But it's actually not healthy from an obedience standpoint or from a behavioral standpoint. What it's going to do is it's going to create hyperfixation or hyper hyper arousal around other dogs and the same thing can be applied to people so there you go you can see it a little bit now right like the, the interactions actually hyping her up a little bit and that's not productive what we want with the puppy and with the with 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 the young dog that we're uh, you know kind of guiding through life is that hey there are other dogs and there are people around and they don't really mean much to you one way or the other they just simply are whether they're barking at you whether they're lunging at you whether they're just being there on their own peacefully don't worry about them too much now if you take your dog to the dog park or you let your dog interact with every stranger or every strange dog he or she meets on the street, you're going to create hyperfixation and hyperarousal towards other dogs. You are not going to make your dog any more or less aggressive than he or she is going to already be. Your dog's sociability and temperament has been determined by genetics already. You can only screw it up by making it worse by having a lot of interactions. Because guess what? Every interaction is a risk. Something bad can happen, right? Like, look at this big dog. He seems friendly and all, but what if all of a sudden he changed his mind and said, you know what? I'm gonna mess this puppy up. This puppy has upset me for whatever reason, and I'm gonna do something. So now she's gonna have a bad experience. The same thing happens in the dog park all the time. And I can't tell you how many clients and customers I, I, I get calling me saying, all of a sudden my dog, you know, at two or three years of age is no longer friendly 
with strangers or with strange dogs. And it's because they allow way too many interactions and some of those interactions, whether they know it or not, were not positive. Okay guys, so what does this all mean? Does this mean your dog should never meet another dog or another person? No, it doesn't. It just simply means be careful and don't make it a priority. When you, got, when you get your dog out and about, the most important thing is that your dog pays attention to you, doesn't pull you around on the leash and doesn't bark. Now, if she was to see that other dog and she's, you know, hey, I, I'm going to bark at him because he's barking at me, the handler would say, ah, ah, and give her a correction. Doesn't matter if the other dog's barking. You're not to be barking at other dogs or other people. Neither of those things is going to be healthy for her or her development in the future.